So I've got the smallest four bifaces down to a nice preform stage now. I'm not going to be able to do any napping for a few days after this. So instead of doing this one and then this one, I'm going to jump straight down to the big one here. This is a big, beautiful piece of stone. Let me get you some closer shots here. Now that I'm looking at it closely, there seems to be a couple cracks running through here. This one might run all the way through. Well. We'll see how healed up they are. But look at all the character in this rock. We've got quartz pockets, different colors, veining. Here's the profile where you can kind of see the stratigraphy of the geology. Since this is such a big piece, it'll take much longer than the other ones. So I'll save the instructional video for one of the smaller bifaces. And I'll just carry on getting this one down. Actually, I think I have a plan for this one. This big biface would be a perfect candidate to try and make a a nice agate basin which would be a late paleo transitional point almost early archaic large ovate point with a fairly flattened base sometimes a little concave but it's not fluted it is thinned basically but it doesn't have a proper flute so it's not a clovis but yeah, I'm definitely going to try and make one of those out of this. I'm going to bring a couple different tools into the mix for this one. Slightly larger hammer stone. It's a sandstone that's pretty hard, but has nice abrading qualities as well. And a larger antler billet. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I really won't be doing any talking in this one. Just concentrating. I'm actually pretty worried. I'm seeing a lot of fault lines running all the way through this stone. Big one all the way across. I have a feeling this isn't going to go very well. Here goes nothing.
Got this front part down pretty good now. This corner is going to fall off at some point. That crack is just making all these flakes terminate in steps. So I've done a little bit of work to the edges all around. I can start setting up some good platforms to target these high spots first. I'll try and get that one before I go anywhere else. This will be the tip, this will be the base of the final point, which is more of a knife. The agate basin was probably a hafted knife most of the time. Potentially a large dart point for a thrown spear or a spear launched from a thrower of some kind. This on the knee method, by the way, I find more effective for larger pieces. It's a bit hard to hold this in your hand and freehand get the large flakes that you need.
There's a big quartz pocket in there too, right where this crack is. I might have to try and force it to pop off or I can try and get some of this down in the process. Part of it. I got the quartz pocket out on this face. I'm gonna try and blow through these step fractures here. See if I can lower that spot. These cracks are really freaking me out here. I wanna try and take a big flake off here, but I don't know if I should risk it. 
So for now, I'm gonna leave this edge. I'm gonna come over here and attack these high spots. This thing keeps coming apart at the seams. This crack runs all the way through there. There's another one here and another one there. Miraculously, it hasn't exploded into a million pieces on me yet, but there's still time for that.
That's a pretty cool one. You're gonna need to see this up close. Flake ran across all the way to there, first of all. <laughs> 